Hey guys, welcome to the Positive Experience Podcast, where we talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly in living your best life. Today's segment is on the hard slog, where we shine the light on small local businesses. Hey guys, I'm Arvi from Pro Physio Plus, and I'm your host today on the Positive Experience. And I've got Stacey here from AFG. I've worked under him, and he's a great man, so I've brought him on. And so let's get straight into it. So do you want to sort of tell us where you grew up, where, you, where your schooling was, and where your current situation is? Well, uh, where do I begin? I was uh, born and raised in North Altona. I uh, lived there for quite a while and then uh, moved over to the, the preppy side of Melbourne in uh, South Yarra. And then uh, from there, went out to Burwood. And uh, now I'm in uh, the north in, in Coburg. So it's been a it's been a bit of a journey. There's a few more locations there, but uh, that's where I'm at at the moment. Nice. And um, what school did you go? Like high school, primary school? Uh, I went to a few primary schools: um, uh, St. Leo's Primary in North Altona, um, Hawksburn Primary in uh, in South Yarra as well, um, and uh, did my, most of my schooling in at CBC in St Kilda Christian Brothers College, okay. and also spent a year in Year Seven in, in Paran High. Uh, before it uh, got closed down. Okay. <laughs> so you went around a little bit. That's pretty good. Um, got yeah, to experience. Mum and dad divorced, man. So uh, we just had to do what we could. Uh, when I say preppy in South Yarra, we certainly didn't live the preppy life. <laughs> All right. Um, so what did you do for work before what you're doing right now? So what was the jobs you had leading up to where you are now? Yeah, again, probably a little bit uh, extensive. But the last... Uh, Last gig that I had that was kind of classified as a normal job would have been an e-commerce manager for a retail company. So it was, uh, it was Steve Madden, who was a, a fairly large uh, shoe company uh, under Solomon Lou. Um, so that was my, my last gig, man. I was behind a computer for, for many hours of the day um, and then kind of uh, left that and, and to pursue full time what I'm doing now, which is, uh, which is football coaching. Nice. Um, so what was there like an aha moment where you went, went from that computer style work to the coaching? Uh, uh, yes and no. Um, I, I was kind of, uh, even in my normal job, I was, I was still coaching on a, on a part-time basis. So um, it got to a stage where, um, you know, I had to push on. I had to risk uh, a little bit um i had already risked prior to that but needed to take an extra step so um i put myself in a bit of position where i could leave a, a permanent kind of um wage um and go out and and, and work for myself casually you know well i suppose on a casual basis um in regards to pay but um full-time in regards to an actual um hours put into the business okay that's good. Um, so you touched on it a little bit earlier, but um, you were coaching at the time and still working. Were you playing soccer as well or were you just a full, uh, coaching on part-time? No, I've, I've been uh, long retired. Um, this is my 12th year not playing. Uh, the final year that I, I did actually play, I was playing under a, a lot of pain and duress. I had uh, osteitis pubis, so I was... It was quite painful, so I'd play on a Saturday and probably just just about get up for the next uh, for the next week. Um, so the coaching staff where where I played, you know, treated me fairly well, and so did my teammates. Yeah. Um, but it was a it was a hard slog, you know. That Sunday morning, oh, I couldn't I couldn't walk, um, couldn't drive. Yeah, I literally was uh, on the couch for the whole day because I was just in so much pain. Okay, what? How old were you at the time? So my final year, I was about 20, 26, I think. Okay. Yeah. My final year, 25 maybe. Right. Yeah. Cool. So you said you're coaching at the moment. So I worked with you at AFG. Do you want to sort of touch on what AFG is and what you, were you actually coaching? Because I know you're <coughs> next door and you're doing really well. So do you want to touch on your current work? Yeah, so uh, Athletic Football Group has been going for a while. The, the actual essence of it has been going on since uh, 2007. Um, and it's kind of had different forms in that in that period of time. But um, in its current form, yeah, we do um, many 
I suppose, different services. But basically, coaching is our is our priority, um, and and teaching kids the you know the fundamentals of football, which is the ABCs, one, two, threes, uh, as we like to call it, um, and giving them a solid foundation moving forward. Um, in their in their football journey, um, and then we're also there for for that part of it as well. So, um, but the essence of it is uh, technical skills based, um, which again we, we we call the ABCs and one two threes. Okay, and you also because I've seen you're at Williams Landing as well. Yeah, so the opportunity um, for I suppose the uh, a vision that I've had for 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 some time um, came up. Um, uh, and, and, and really brought forward by some parents in, in, in the area. And, um, you know, there was a couple of clubs that were, were approached first and uh, declined uh, uh, respectfully on, on the offer. Um, and then uh, Williams Landing Soccer Club at the time um, was very new. It actually didn't have a club room. Um, they only had a, a few members that were playing um, uh, actually, not even at the venue where they where we're currently at now. Um, so it was a bit of a blank canvas, and um, pitched the idea uh, to the to the president and committee at the time, and they 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 took it on. Uh, so it kind of started last year um, in, in a very small capacity, um, but um, since then, you know, we've we've aligned ourselves with Southampton Football Club in the Premier League. Um, which we, we've found to be incredible in the time that we've had, even uh, during isolation, they've been fantastic. Um, so we've um, we've grown, um, and uh, we're doing quite well. well we, ha- we were doing quite well, and still doing quite well in the in these times. Um, you know, we've we've probably got eighty um, percent of our um, members training uh, four times a week um, online, um, and you know, some the twenty percent you know, have their own reasons on why they're not on, but um, um, we, we, we're still continuing and uh, almost uh, haven't skipped a beat, to be honest. Well, that's good to hear. Um, keeping it positive. So for people that don't know, Southampton is in the top, uh, are they in the top league or are they Southampton? Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're in the top league. They're doing, yeah. They've done quite well. They, they had a bit of a, a blip at the end of last year, yeah. um, but uh, they ca- came through with the good sound. And look, we, the, the senior team is one thing and, and it's nice to look at that. But um, for us, it's, it's really the academy and, and what they've been able to do um, within their, their uh, youth ranks. And uh, they're, you know, probably outside of, um, you know, Manchester United and Chelsea, they're arguably the number three academy in, in England um, with a much smaller uh, uh, budget to play with. Um, and they've done incredibly well. So th- that's what we look look to. And I know that a lot of people look to, towards the senior team, but, um, and that's nice, but um, it's really the, the, the juniors and the youth that we, we look at and we're, we're so thrilled to be um, aligned with them. Yeah, and as you probably know, in most cases, um... A lot of these good academies produce these great players and the big big teams go and sign them. But they all, all come from the same sort of academy. And I know Southampton is one of them. And working with you and getting that deal, especially in Australia, that's something very big. Not many clubs have that. And I think something yeah. most clubs need to strive towards. And it's funny, it's, it, it was kind of uh, 20 months um, in the making. Uh, and I suppose there were other opportunities to to align ourselves with um, w- with the club, and um, whether it be in England or, or across Europe, <coughs> um, actually even across uh, North America. But um, the the way the Sa- Southampton um, came across was actually um, really positive, um, but driven by them, they really want us to assist them in, in, in getting those, those players that you're talking about to the, to the top level. Um, and they've been outstanding. Unfortunately, it's been inhibited, obviously, by COVID-19. But, um, you know, we, we've remained positive. The connection's very, very strong. Um, they've been in communication quite often. Um, they're very impressed by the work that we've done during this period. Um, they're continuously set, um, sending out their best wishes. So um, we're hoping that um, all that positive work that we've done in uh, almost 36 months now um, can come to fruition in the in the 36 months um, ahead of us. Okay. So in touch on that, so do they help out with like a bit of coaching or do they give you some um, training drills or how does the, the South Mel- Hampton actually help Williams Landing Soccer Club? So the, the, the beginning of it, um, actually they ran the club trials. Okay. So um, we, we had... Uh, 10 coaches running 
um, well, sorry, I shouldn't say running. They ran it, but we had 10 coaches there, including two from the academy that um, were there selecting players for the teams for 2020. So that happened in October last year. Um, so it was a, a very much an unbiased um, uh, opinion and assessment on the players. So, you know, when, when it came down to, you know, having certain discussions with parents about why they, they didn't get in or, or, or they were positioned in certain places, well, you know, there was 10 coaches looking um, and, and, you know, basically we went with you know, the majority opinion. Um, but first and foremost, the players were selected during that trial process from the two coaches from Southampton in Andy and Ed. Um, and then, you know, then there was... Um, at times robust debate on on um, players that were selected so that was the first thing that um, that was real uh, and tangible from from Southampton uh, since then we've got access to their online coaching platform uh, which basically um, takes us through their um, their training systems so every coach at our club uh, from a and B B coaches have access to that and can formulate um, uh, a session from that platform. Along with that, we have the Southampton curriculum, um, which was supposed to be um, tapered with this year um, because uh, we, we wanted to see where our teams were at. Um, so then we can't just kind of look at a curriculum. We needed to see where our teams were at. So unfortunately, it wasn't inhibited now. So we haven't been able to use For, for 2021, it, it will be used. Um, and along with that, you know, continuous um, in the small little uh, games that we, we did play where we can send footage to, to the club uh, for them to have a look at and, um, and, give, and then for them to give us um, th their opinions on, on how we're playing and, and on feedback on certain individuals. So that's going to continue to grow. Um, and along with that, we've, we've done uh, multiple, um, off the top of my head, I think nine webinars uh, with Southampton where our coaches, first and foremost, have um, uh, been involved with. Um, and at times on certain webinars where they've specifically asked for parents and, and players to be involved with as well. So, um, again, there's been continuous contact and, it's, um, and we're very happy. We're very happy. We, could, we couldn't ask for anything more in particular during this situation. Yeah, for sure. So that's great. So very few clubs. They're actually just down the road from Pro Physio Plus, Williams Landing Soccer Club. <laughs> so if you, everyone around the area, be sure to check them out. Um, they've got some great stuff happening. Uh, with a lot, a lot of this stuff going on, how do you normally plan your day, week um, or month to get things done? What, during this time? Yeah. Uh, look, at this at this point in time, it's kind of um, it just um, it's quite quite fixed because nothing's really going to come up and uh, and and take you away from kind of I suppose your your daily routine if you do have one. So um, I'm I'm um, um, you know I'm mum's carer, so she lives out in the in the east. So I get um, I'm able to um, get over to her twice a week. Um, so fortunate enough to have paperwork to be able to do that. Um, but basically, um, my day starts, um, quite regularly with doing, um, exercise, um, cardio sessions with my players. So eight o'clock on the dot for, for, for 30 minutes, we, we go through, a, um, you know, a kind of a, a, an AFG wake up session, um, which is quite nice and gets me, me, uh, uh, up and about. Then I go through, you know, my normal kind of um, casual uh, wake up period until about ten o'clock, and then I really start cracking into work that I that I've got. I'm currently studying as well, okay. um, so that's been uh, that's been uh, strange because I haven't really done that for quite some time, um, and catching up uh, a lot of the sessions are done during the night. So um, watching, you know, videos um, and and webinars. Um, and uh, yeah, just kind of doing that and getting into into the business stuff um, up until about three o'clock, and I start preparing for my uh, my daily sessions through um, uh, AFG's Top Gun program and Williams Landing sessions. Oh, nice. All right, so pretty busy, even being in lockdown, um, still keeping yourself busy with a lot of things going on. So I can't imagine how Absolutely. busy you'd be without um, restrictions. You'll be actually on the I field think... running around. I think you just, uh, you know, you repl you, you, you've got to replace um, some one thing with another. Yeah. Um, so, you know, one thing, and don't get me wrong, it, it, this isolation period has been uh, a lot more difficult than the first one. 
um, it's it's certainly been a, a bit of pill to swallow, but um, you can only feel sad and angry for, for a certain amount of time until it starts really affecting you. Um, and I kind of made a, a very uh, conscious decision to um, con- only think about what I can control and not what I can't, um, which was the real frustrating part. Um, so, um, and yeah, I, 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 I don't watch uh, a lot of news these, these days. And, and if anyone knows me, I'm, I'm pretty obsessed with uh, current affairs. Um, I don't, I'm not reading as much as uh, on that sort of stuff as what I usually uh, be doing. So, um, and as soon as you kind of do that, you know, the world is not so bad um, and you kind of uh, add things that are going to um, be positive in, in your life. Um, and that for me at this point in time is, is, is getting into some study that I, again, I haven't done for, for quite some time. It's good. Um, so I really like the point how you pointed out, you can only do what you can control because there's no point dwelling on things where you can't really control, especially being in lockdown. We're not the politicians and <laughs> we can't do anything about it. So we just go on with our day and make sure we can change what we can control. So what do you, do you want to touch on where you're studying at the moment? Is there anything? Yeah, I'm, st- I'm studying law. Okay. Um, so, um, yeah, which is, uh, something that I kind of had an interest in, uh, uh, a long time ago. Um, and now just, um, uh, now that I've got the opportunity to I've got time up my hand, my hands, uh, to, to start looking at, um, and delving into, and it's certainly been a, a big adjustment, um, concentrating on something, um, that, you know, I'm being, I'm being constantly assessed, yeah. um, which is, which is unusual, um, but, um, yeah, enjoying it. And, and it's, um, you know, the, the struggle that I've got with it and, and there is uh, some struggle for, <laughs> for sure. Um, it's, it's actually quite refreshing because it keeps me on my toes. Yeah, for sure. So that's, that's, is that going to take you back into that desk job area or is that just on the side? What's, what's happening with that once you finish? No, um, no, I don't want to be, um, behind a desk. It's not my thing. Uh, it has been my thing in the past, but, um, no, uh, my my um, my home is on the park, and I, and I can't wait to, to to get back. Yeah, for sure. All right. Um, on touching that, is there any personal war stories or regarding any injuries? You touched on it earlier, or setbacks that you had, and like a key lesson you learned from it. Uh, I've you know, I've got many. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've got many kind of war stories. Um, and uh yeah just thinking about it look i mean injuries is one thing and i think um yeah where do i begin kind of i suppose in in the playing time um mostly being left alone was was not great you know i've I've had two older brothers and they're much older than i am um and they you know married and had their own lives and so on so i kind of grew up as a, a as a as a lone child um and mum didn't speak english mum didn't have um money she was a pensioner and and so on so that was quite tough and when you when you uh when you're so young and you leave things into other people's hands um it it doesn't it it didn't work out and i don't think it would work out for for many so um my playing career only got to a certain level from me just you know busting down doors and 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 then being accepted i suppose so that again that's a really long story but um you know, in, in my coaching career, there's been a lot of stumbling blocks um, for many, many different areas. And again, uh, people don't like um, uh, people asking questions, you know, um, and sometimes those questions are not to, to upset people. It's actually just to understand a bit more about, about certain things, but people take it the wrong way. You can be incredibly polite, um, but uh, some people just won't take it that way. Um, so it's taken a long time. I've been coaching um, you know, for 14 years now. Um, and it's only been in the last few years where, you know, I was able to open up to, to people, um, and let them assist me, but it had to be, uh, it had to be very cautious and, and people to really show that they were genuine in their actions, uh, and, and, and their talk. And, and certainly the actions were the thing that kind of let me free up and, and let people in and, um, and, and assist me. And, and, and that's why I, be, I believe we're as successful as what we are um, because it wasn't just talk. Um, yeah. It was actions by certain individuals 
and uh, I couldn't be happier. But, you know, th- those type of war stories are, are long and extensive yeah. um, from different parts of my industry. Um, and uh, it's certainly unfortunate because generally my, you know, I've tried to assist so many different people. Um, but um, it, if it's not theirs, um, it's, you know, they'll, they'll stop you. They'll try and stop you. And um, it's a shame. But um, that's the way that my industry is and um, I've, I've accepted it and I, I now thrive on, believe it or not, uh, I've ended on the hatred that, that people do have for me and, um, and that um, spurs me on to be um, yeah, more successful. So uh, that type of feeling um, is, is awesome and makes me stronger. Yeah, for sure. So plenty of, um, cause I've experienced some of your war stories as well, being in the trenches with you. Um, there's a lot that goes on, but, um, you've st- stayed strong and it's good how you've found the opportunity to sort of just open up. Would you believe if you opened up a little bit earlier to people that you trust could have helped you or is that from the experiences you learned? Yeah, look, my experience, it, it made me, um, kind of keep people away. Um, and, and again, it's really unfortunate and, you know, I've largely done this on, on my own. Yeah. Um, certainly my, my wife um, ha- has helped um, uh, a lot since we've, we've been together um, and, and kind of kept me positive um, throughout. But again, it was, it, honestly, it was, it's the actions of people um, that, that has, that made me open up. There, there wouldn't have been any other way yeah. for me to, to do that. Um, a lot of people have spoken and, and talked and uh, and done that sort of thing for many many uh, years, um, and nothing came to fruition. And um, in fact, it turns and and um, people were um, trying to bring me down, um, which is you know unfortunate. It is what it is, and I can't change that. But um, again, these individuals that I'm, I'm talking about, and if they if they are watching, they know exactly who they are. Um, it took those actions for me to sit down and realize and go, wow. You know, I didn't even I, I didn't even ask for this, yeah. uh, and they've done it and and they've helped me. Um, so, and now that that kind of bubble, I suppose, has has, has grown, um, and it's largely parents. Um, and those parents, you know, I think they have trust in me because they, they're seeing the benefits of of their kid, and not just uh, on the football field, but um, you know, with their schoolwork or you know their 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 mental attitude, their politeness, um, you know, at the end of the day, not everyone's going to be a professional footballer or a professional sportsman. However, one day there will be men and there'll be women and what kind of men are we, and women are, are we going to send out to, um, to the larger society? So we feel like at AFG and Williams Landing that uh, we're certainly doing that and, uh, and people that are external and, and come in see that straight away uh, and again that's part of our part of our strength um that people when they do see it they can appreciate it and uh they want in as well yeah some great um gems you sort of touched on there um some great points especially um training little kids it's how you bring them up because that's how they're going to go out go down go into the real world <laughs> if they don't make it they go into the corporate world whatever they're doing it's all coming comes from how they grew up. So I think that's a really good job you guys are doing over there. Um, so, so we'll go, is there any tips or tricks um, for the audience listening, like a top three, maybe for new soccer players or kids starting up or anything like that, you could sort of shout out? Uh, look, we're, we're, technical, technical abilities, um, it, it, it's certainly number one on the football field. There's no doubt about it. You can be physically strong. You could be tactically astute. Um, but if you don't have the ability to c- control and pass a ball um, at, at a decent level um, and be creative in what you do and not be a textbook player, um, you know, it's, it's very important to get that technical base in. So, you know, we kind of use um, the analogy of, you know, not, not writing a, an, a book straight away, but understanding and uh, knowing the alphabet and the numbers. So we go A, B, C, one, two, three. And from there, we're able to formulate a sentence, um, then into a paragraph and, and then uh, it, then it continues. So that's how we see football. Um, the other thing is, you know, accept, accept criticism um, and, ex, ex, um, uh, and, and feedback. Um, it's sometimes you may not like it, um, but you, 
that needs to happen. You need to accept and go, okay, I'm going to work on what the coach is saying and, and wants me to work on. Or if you would disagree with that opinion, um, prove it, prove that you, you know, that that person's wrong. Um, instead of, you know, going into your shell or kicking the bucket or, um, or something along those lines. So you, you just got to be strong in what you, you want. If you want to be a footballer, if you want to be a basketball, if you want to be a lawyer, you got to get th- these little setbacks and, you know, feedback that you're not going to like. And, and what's your response? Um, and I think the response uh, eventually ends up defining you. Um, people that get the, those knocks um, and keep getting knocks and they keep coming back um, end up being incredibly successful. So uh, I suppose um, those, are, those are certainly two things. Um, and the third one, and probably more in particular for parents, is um, certainly in, in my fields and, and uh, across other fields as well, um, choose your environment properly. You know, do your research, ask the questions. Um, it's incredible um, how many people make the wrong choice in, in terms of their environment. Um, and sometimes, um, you know, to choose the environment, you've got to look at who's planting the seed. Um, and whoever's planting the seed will create um, the, the tree with the most fruit. So it takes a long time um, for that fruit, uh, for that, for those fruit to grow, that tree to grow. Um, and you can't expect uh, that tree to grow overnight. So look who's uh, planting that seed um, and ask the right questions. Yeah, for sure. I think that's some great points you raised there, especially um, how you got to prove, if you believe in something, just prove it and getting up, um, especially if you can have setbacks, but getting up and most of these elite athletes you see, they have the same setbacks. They have so many setbacks over their time, but they kept getting up and that's where they are now. So I think that's a big point, especially for young listeners listening to this. Just keep going, keep achieving hard and you'll get to wherever you want to be if you keep trying. So um, I think I think just to touch on that, yeah. you know, people look at the end product um, and it doesn't matter what sport we're referring to. It's, it's completely irrelevant. And people go, well, that's elite. It's like, yeah, but, they were once almost exactly like you or your child. They came from, you know, sometimes humble beginnings. So, uh, and some, some came from privilege too. Um, and we come from different, um, different environments, but you know, you become elite, but you start off somewhere else. Um, and, and that's where we are in Australia. We, we are that somewhere else. And sometimes some of us, will become that person that other people will refer to later on down the track. Yep. Um, so, um, yeah, just, just keep pushing. And if, you know, and accept feedback, that's a big thing. Accept feedback um, because if you don't, you'll always be um, that big fish in a small pond. Yeah, for sure. I really like that point. Even in um, the physio world, you got to accept feedback, especially when you do and always willing to learn. So you're not, there's always someone that knows more. And if you take, appreciation to learn off them you're going to be a better person for that because there's a lot of people that have strong heads thinking they're the top but they you still need to have the ability to learn off others 100 percent. yeah all right so i think you'll like this question but what's one common myth about your professional field that you like to debunk that it's not a real job <laughs> it's uh it's it very much is a real job um and i think that uh you know uh, full-time coaches and there are some you know many of us um, that do what I do um, a lot of us put a lot of work into it and um, the ones that are successful are the ones that um, are, are true to what they to the, what they say so you know for me yes I, I I'm a football coach um, but uh, you know I'm a mentor I'm a carer I'm uh, you know someone to to, to listen to, to problems you end up becoming a pseudo psychologist, um, and um, you know we we believe that we play a, a big part in in the child's development. So, you know, sometimes you know there, there are parents out there that are coaches, and they and they come up to you and say, "I can't, I can't do this anymore. He's not responding to me." Um, sometimes you've got to separate home life and 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 the other life. Yeah. So. Um, then there's a completely different reaction to when they they're coached by 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 me or someone else. So um, you know, and we 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 think that 
or certainly I think that, you know, that separation ends up helping, uh, helping home life, helping school life, social life. Um, so, you know, in different parts of the world, what, what I do in, in, in other sports as well, it's considered a, 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 a real job um, and a respected job. Um, but for some reason here in Australia, we, we, we don't think that way and, and it's just kind of a hobby and it's certainly more than a hobby. Yeah, for sure. Um, I agree because the amount of time you invest in, at least you're doing something that you enjoy. That's the main thing. And a lot of people are stuck in the office and complain about, oh, it's not your coach. That's not a real job. But I think you aspiring young kids to be where they are now and as they grow up, that's you're being their mentor. So I think that's a pretty much a job in itself. So it's more than just a real job, I say. <laughs> Yeah. And again, I, I, obviously I come from a, a biased opinion, but yeah. Um, you know, yeah, I'm very fortunate that I, I risked, um, you know, uh, many different things to, to, um, to follow what my, my passion was. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've, I'm fortunate now to have made that, um, that passion into my occupation and, and my job. Um, and, and I love it, but um, it's certainly not easy. And it uh, it comes with a lot of tough moments, um, and um, yeah, maybe people don't don't think of it that way, but that's my yeah. my debunking that it uh, it very much is a, is a real job. Yeah, because at the end of the day, you're the one that's going to be waking up and doing that job. Because if you're a st- still stuck in the office job, I don't think you'd be as happy as you are right now. And no. yeah, so I think it's definitely a real job. I support you there. Um, everything's a real job even if it's just a small hobby it's still considered a job because you've got a task to complete so it doesn't I, I, matter. Think at yeah. the, I think at the end of the day you know wh- whatever job you do someone's got to do it um, yeah. you know whatever it is and um, you know again there's obviously a market for what I do um, and people wouldn't come to me if I wasn't doing a good job so um, and that's why you know I think that I am personally doing a good job and, and the people around me are doing a good job um, and that's why you know you know, this certainly, I mean, you would know a few of them as well. Um, some of our players won't be here in the next few years. They'll be overseas. Um, and we, we look forward in um, um, basking in their glory. So, um, and if, if I wasn't doing what I'm doing, that wouldn't happen. That probably wouldn't happen. Yeah, for sure. Because I've played soccer pretty much my, most of my life. And you're one of the very few coaches that coaches the real technical ability and which I wish I got taught that when I was younger I would have made my game a lot better as well so definitely have a look into um Stacey's coachings above and beyond um so I'm going to ask you a couple of quick fire questions might be a little bit off topic but we'll see what you say um do you prefer Chinese or Japanese food oh oh dude now you got me stumped (laughs) oh man oh you know, I think it, as a whole, I would choose Chinese. But if I had to pick a dish, it would be um, homemade um, Japanese sukiyaki. Homemade? Okay. Yeah, I've been to Japan a couple of times and I had a, um, a homestay family and, and um, been over there and, and she'd make this sukiyaki that just it just can't be beat. All right. So, would you choose Africa? Would you rather go to Africa or Asia? Never been to Africa, so I, I would choose. Uh, I've been to Asia. I've been to a few countries in Asia, so I would choose uh, Africa and probably in particular Tanzania. Okay, all right. What, I think you like this one: perfect teeth or perfect hair. Oh, my, my teeth are horrible, so I'd pick teeth. Yeah. And uh, the hair, like I've, I, people know me as having the hat on. I've forgotten how to style my hair, to be honest. I wouldn't even know what to do now. Yeah. All right. Uh, what fashion trend do you just not get that's going on at the moment? Um, I, I don't understand uh, the early 2000s look that's kind of coming in. I think that was the worst fashion period in, in history. You know, some people might talk about the 70s. No, early 2000s was the wackest look of all time. And that's what I'm t- coming in. Do you want to tell me what the look actually looks like? Oh, it's, I suppose it's hard to, de- hard to describe, but um, I suppose where it was a time where um, you almost put on anything and, 
and it felt like it worked. Um, yeah, yeah I, just, I don't know. My, my, my daughter's kind of going through that stage now and, um, I, I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's get back to into it. So, uh, what advice would you give someone uh, wanting to pursue a career similar to yours? Uh, I, my first reaction is don't, but um, <laughs> uh, I think, uh, I, yeah, uh, you know, align yourself with, with someone that you can learn from um, and um, you'll be surprised where that, that person uh, will take you and, and want to take you. Um, you know, I've got some, some people that are with me and if they, they stay the journey, um, you know, they'll, they'll be able to do what, um, what I'm doing right now and, and, and more, um, you know, I'm still young and, you know, I've got a long future ahead of me, but, um, eventually I won't be doing what I'm doing, yeah. uh, at some stage and, and someone needs to take over. Um, so yeah, I, I'd, I'd recommend, uh, aligning yourself with, with someone where you can learn from. Um, that would be the biggest key. And I think in regards to coaching specifically, um, don't just read text, you know, um, ask questions, uh, view different sessions, go and watch games. Uh, don't be fixated in, in, in just kind of one mold. Um, you know, sport is ever changing. Um, and, um, and you, the textbook will only last a, a certain amount of time. So you can't bring out a new volume every year. Um, so yeah, read and, and learn like that, but certainly go out and, and yep. view different, um, different coaches doing their thing. For sure. All right. Um, tell us, can you tell the audience or like to share something, anything you do, <coughs> any promotions or seminars that's coming up? Um, we've got plenty. Um, so currently right now we're, we're, um, uh, working with uh, Guillermo Sanchez from Venezuela. He's a sports psychologist uh, and has worked um, uh, across North America in, 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 through college and MLS, um, through uh, uh, Greece in the second division, um, and also India in their, in their um, um, Premier League, um, and still does work with, um, with, with the Indian FA. Um, and he's... Um, also um, worked with Nani, and who's a, a perennial um, uh, Premier League winner, and, and uh, Kaká, who's a, a Ballon d'Or winner. Um, so you know we hold him in, in in high regard for sure. And he's doing a lot of work with our kids at the moment. Um, and this is for any kid; um, doesn't have to be part of the club or or academy. Um, and uh, he's got a second uh, intake um, that begins this Sunday. Um, uh, which is for kids eight uh, and, and above. So it's only um, 12 spots per, per group. Um, so it is small and, and, and intimate, um, but that's what we, we've got at the moment. Um, and also school holiday, um, you know, obviously looking a little bit different. So we've got sessions uh, online in Zoom that we'll be running um, Monday to Friday for, for 30 minutes uh, over school holiday period. Again, get, them, get the kids away from playing Fortnite or whatever they're playing these days or, you know, and get them active. Um, it's sure. super important. Um, and we, we're going to continue with our um, um, uh, morning wake up session. So it might not be eight o'clock. Uh, it'll probably be at nine o'clock, but again, getting the kids uh, up and active um, and, and starting the day pretty, pretty positive and not, uh, not sloppy. <laughs> so they're, they're just a uh, few of the things that we're, we're doing, but um, you know, yeah, we're doing uh, as much as we can during this period, for sure. Cool. All right. Uh, what's the best way to sort of reach you? Is it um, email, Facebook, <laughs> Instagram? Uh, yeah, Instagram. Not, I'm not a big Instagrammer on my business uh, business page. It's uh, members only. So, um, yeah, people can message me there for sure. Um, there's also an email, admin at athleticfootballgroup.com um, and also Facebook um uh, page on athletic football group so uh they're the I suppose the three places where you can where you can catch us um and um yeah we we're still going we're still rocking and rolling yeah for sure because um all right final question 
What does the word positive experience mean to you? What are, uh, what do those two words mean? So mean? Positive experience. Yeah. What's if you just hear those words? What's it mean? Positive experience, man. Honestly, the first thing that comes to mind is just being happy. Yeah. You know, and I'm I'm blessed um, that uh, I've been able to change my life and and have many positive experiences, and uh, that's through almost uh, a, a daily occurrence. To be honest, even even during this period, going down to my local cafe and seeing a smile on. Uh, on the Takis Bakery, uh, ladies. Um, so even even something small like that, you know, my face mask um, that I'm wearing has a has a, a cheesy smiley face on it. So um, yeah, you know, try and find happiness wherever you can. Cool, I like that one. All right, Th- thanks for your time, Stace. Um, so you can see him on uh, Facebook, Instagram. Or, and goes by the name Athletic Football Group. Please be sure to shoot him a message and yeah, definitely have a look at Williams Landing Soccer Club. They've got some great things happening and being in partnership with South Southampton. It's nothing small, it's a big deal. So definitely um good stuff there, Stace, and thanks for your just time. Just wanna just wanna stress it's Williams Landing Football Club. We did change it. All right. It is the world game and uh it's uh it's football in our part of the world. How's it how's it in competitive with um AFL then? <laughs> AFL, AFL's footier as well, I suppose, but uh, you, know, you also use your hands there, don't you? All right, cheers. Yeah.